Hello everyone, welcome to this new series that I'm starting called, in, called Ignoring the Rules, in which I'm examining some of the rules by ignoring them, seeing what the game would be like if those rules were not in place. In this case specifically, I am ignoring the errata on the Ziggle Miner, <coughs> which of course happened before I really started playing the game, so I have never experienced the Ziggle Miner in his original form. So obviously I could have gone back to um, the card pool from that time before the errata happened, but in fact I've chosen to to, to ignore the errata and put the original version into a modern card pool to see how that turns out. So here you see I have the original legal liner with no errata. So it exhausts sim and name a number to discard the top two cards of your deck. If at least one of those cards has a cost equal to the name number, choose a hero you control. That hero adds resources to his resource pool equal to the named number. As opposed to only one per match, one resource per match, as in the errata version. So this, of course, is my deck, which I built following the death of David Bowie last year, called the Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stargazer and the Miners from Moria. But I've updated and tweaked it slightly. I've removed hidden cash from the deck since that I think was released after the errata and it seemed to me like it was there partly to to make up for the errata by still allowing Z to produce some larger swings of resources. But also with the original version it doesn't work quite as well because obviously it's zero cost. But it does give you two resources against the sky. So I prob it probably still would have been good, but anyway, I, I decided to leave it out in favour of just sticking to the higher cost cards. And of course I'm playing Escape from Umbar. The first quest from the Sands of Harad Deluxe Expansion. So the important points. Uh, after doing the attacks and destroying the character, remove X progress from the main quest. X is the attacking enemy's threat. At the end of the round, if the main quest has been in play the entire round, and there are no progress tokens on it, the players lose the game. And stage count had 115 progress tokens on it, while at least one player is engaged with an enemy. The players count to this stage. The location I've chosen is the narrow alleyway. This deck is not really equipped for immediate combat, so I plan to get rid of the enemy by sending him into the alleyway, and hopefully by the time he comes out again I'll be a bit more equipped to deal with him. So, let's go in. Draws to Galadriel. Okay, so... Let's discard the Knight of the White Tower, grab resource to Arlen, and spend all four of my resources to immediately get in the Ziggy Stargazer combo. And let's see, okay. So, well, this is pretty great. I'll arrange the cards like this, and name five. So I discard the Arid Living Miner, who of course is put into play under my control after being discarded, and Glorfindel, who costs five, so I add five resources. And I suppose I may as well then spend those five resources to play Gorfindel from my discard pile. I like Gorfindel. It's obviously a fantastic addition to this deck. Since usually it works with standing fight, but he has that just kind of built in. 
So, two threats in the staging area. And let's press the seven, ten. Let's just go for ten and we reveal. We will hide. Scout scouts from top of the castle. The enemy is the sky. Oh, okay. That's problematic. Okay, another Umbar sentry. No threat has been added to the staging area. So I make eight progress. I can also discard to Aelin. I will discard Galvor to Aelin. So I make nine progress. Actually, no, I'm going to leave it eight, but I will still discard Galvor to ready Dwarfin now. Then let's travel to the alleyway. And put this up by sentry under now. So I only have one to deal with. So in combat phase, archery one. Very good. Mind if you take that. Then he attacks. I'm going to remove one progress token from the main quest. Then we'll do that. And I will defend with Borkendale. So, to attack, Borkendale takes one damage. I discard the Aragorn Miner to ready Borkendale and attack for four. And kill the sentry. Control N. Use Galadriel. And let's do this again. Okay. Five, once again. So, another miner. And Gildor costs five, so I add five resources. And just for the purposes of keeping track, I suppose, if we compare with the cards that I've seen, I don't think I, I've been in a position that I could have really discard, essentially discarded two of the same cost. Maybe I could have discarded those two mirrors. But really, both these times using the miner with the posterata version, I would have gained one resource. And that would have still been decent. But in fact, using the pre errata version, I have gained, instead of two resources, a total of ten resources. So I'm plus eight for being pre errata instead of post errata. Just if we want to keep track. Now, <coughs> I really just need to find a stand and fight. And. Oh, really good golden. Yeah. So, there is no threat in the staging area. I am about to have to deal with this on bar sentry. But, well, I can deal with it. So, let's quest for 10. And reveal our open state. Okay. So that's three threat, I make seven progress. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is explored. And the Umbar Sentry comes back into play and engaged with me. Now, if I were to travel to the Radrim Estate, I would get another enemy engaged with me. I would rather not. So, let's leave that. Oh, uh, I want to discard the Stargazer. 
already broken the bell. I assign the one point of archery damage to Gorkendale. I remove one progress from the quest. Defend with the undamaged Ogre Minor. So I only make an additional attack against you after this one. Well, that's annoying. But of course, since uh, I, <coughs> as I said, I, I intended to ready Gorkendel before the combat phase, I suppose I would have come with Gorkendel. Oh, no. Uh, I, I really shouldn't defend with Gorkendel. So I'll kill off the other Ergen Liner with the second story character, which plays the second line one. And I also have to remove one progress from the main quest, the one thirty beyond our sentry. I attack with Warpen Bell and do two damage. Okay, control N. So let's grab the mirror. Let's play a map of Aeonu. And let's use the oh no wait. No, let's exhaust Galadriel. Draw our card and then use the mirror. Okay, standing fight is the card that I want. Shuffle and then we discard standing fight. That's okay. I'll pay one for Golden Tomb to bring back standing fight. Now, Stargazer, okay, so I'm going to go up to this, and then four. So I gain four resources. Had I been playing with the regular reminder, there were two two cost allies in there, so I probably would have done those and gained two resources. So four rather than two, I'm still up ten resources over what I would have been with the poster art version of the card. So now I can play the stand and fight. Which allies do I want to bring in? A decent defender would be good, so either Gildor or the Knight of the White Tower. They're both equally good as defenders, really. The Knight is cheaper, if that matters. Which, with the number of resources I'm getting, it probably doesn't. Well, okay. One, two, three, four. To stand and fight. Bringing in, bringing in the Knight of the White Tower. I will then discard the map of Aeonel and pay 5 to play standing fight from my discard pile and get to the bottom of my deck and with that I will bring in Gildor can't decide between them, just get both A new map of ARNL, and there we go. So,
There is three threat in the saving area, plus three, we get seven. Ten. Okay, Southern Champion. Scout until her enemy. Okay, this is the champion. So, ten versus six, I'm making poor progress. Uh, I can still make progress on the main quest while side quest to in, in the champion ring to play. I just can't complete it. That's fine. So four progress. Now, can I really deal with? Oh, hang on. Uh, no, plus two threat as well. Is plus two with the other things. So it's plus two threat attack, defense, and then black heart effect. I don't have to engage the champion right now. Which, yeah, maybe we should just ignore him for the moment. Well, I mean, it would take nine attack to kill him, and I'd also need to defend him. I might not even want to travel under the circumstances. So, I don't know. Well, let's see. So, I get. I'd probably grab another one of these guys. <coughs> I can ready Gorkum Bell. So yeah, I think it's better to try and keep the staging area clear. So I got to put one progress on the main quest. And also I searched the encounter deck for a hard enemy and put it into play and engaged with me, so we're doing it on these guys. We have a total of archery two. Well, I can just do heroes to take some of it. Let's tap out Gorkendal and go in. Ready Gorkendal. And defend these attacks until the end of the defending character can be ready. Okay, I can deal with that. And choose a non unique enemy in the staging area. Oh. Technically, Southern Champion does not make the enemy unique. Oh, in both of these cases, I was removing the progress. So, okay, this shadow effect means I have to engage the soldier. And uh, after he engages me, I will remove two progress from the quest. So, it did not make me need to attack. But it does make the regular attack. Kills off my early minor. Now, I'm saying X is the attacking enemy's threat. Doesn't say printed threat, so before 
5 with the boost from the side quest. Okay, and with that done, Glorfindel will just kill off this one. Since that's all I can do. And I can't actually damage. No, I can't damage the champion until I get the progress on the side quest. Okay, this is problematic. Gildor can't ready. Alright. Let's use the mirror. I'm not seeing a standing fight in there. So let's grab the silver arm, oh, I think. Shuffle, remember to discard silver arm. Oh, I will go on team to get the arm oh, back. And play it. And I'm also going to play the second minor. Now let's take a look here. Well, you get a bunch of resources, but then not. <coughs> I don't actually have stuff to spend them on right now. So let's just. To this and so five. So I gain five resources. I will gain one with post around version. So I think that's up to it over plus fourteen resources. Okay, so this second line is going to be a chump, I think. Okay, so his force effects are when he engages. So I don't need any more progress on the quest for him. Oh, but I am going to remove his progress when he kills. Something so yeah, I need to go to the main quest. The seven and Glorfindel, who are already by starting test of will and returning to my hand with the silver heart. So I'm questing for ten there's an empty staging area. Really hoping not to see another enemy, but I do make it progress. So this is explored. I don't have to engage the archer, I just have to do it with the archery. So that's something at least. There is archery 3 in total. It's a shame about the sequence here. If archery come after attacks, I could put a point of it on Glorfindel knowing that I can just play him in my discard pile again next round. As it is though, I suppose we're going to do this and I'm going to have to take a risk with the sentry and take it undefended. Okay. Risk plays on. Do defend this. Does I remove five progress from the quest? 
Now I can attack f5 and kill off the sentry. So, gradually getting this a bit more under control. Let's go level. Another heart. Let's play it. Use the mirror. Still not seeing a standing fight. Oh no, yeah, there, there is a standing fight. That is the card which I need. Shuffle and whatever I randomly discard, I'm putting it back because these are three great cards that I want to hold on to. Okay, the orb is definitely what I want. So let's set it up like this. Six. So I gained six resources. As opposed to the two I would have gotten from the Gimli and the Red White Tower. So that's plus 18. 18 extra resources compared to the Pure Art version. Let's pay six for standard fight on Bjorn. This is kind of an amazing combo with the Priorata version, version of the Miner because you discard uh, an ally with a high cost, gain that cost in resources, which you can immediately spend to play Stand and Fight to bring that ally into play. And then, of course, I'm going to discard the map of Ayano to play Stand and Fight again from my discard pile for five to bring in Jupiter. So, okay, now that this should be alright. So I want to go to the side quest. There's two threats in the staging area. Well, uh, let's see. I won't be able to kill the archer. So I probably don't want to bother engaging him in the first place. Well, uh, it's going to be nine. That's, that's okay. So, ten. Thirteen, just to be sure. In field, well, uh, player test of will. Okay, I do not in Okay, so uh, 13 versus 2. Th this quest can have excess progress on it. Definitely it makes a difference. So, now I will defend with the bow and discard the shadow card since, as I noted earlier, the champion is not made unique. Despite all the other boosts it gets. Okay, shadow card didn't really make a difference. The bow takes two damage. I activate Bjorn's ability. 
So he's now attacking me. Four, I take it. Eight. Nine, ten. Nine, eight. Yeah, it doesn't give plus two hit points. So yes, this is correct. I attack for ten. The champion is dead. And I add Southern Champion to the victory display. Since I haven't used this silver heart, I will discard with Arwen to get a resource to Galadriel. And troll lane. I forgot about archery there. So. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll put the archery on Bjorn, who is then shuffled into my deck, and I do not draw that test of will because my deck is shuffled. In fact, I draw a dwarf pipe. I am okay with drawing a dwarf pipe. So, okay, let's trigger the mirror first. Well, none of these is especially helpful, but I guess I'll grab the map. We'll use the heart. Play this dwarf pipe. And the map. Use the stargazer. Okay, I need to find my standing fights again. Yeah, we're not going to discard now. So, I would actually quite want to speed through my deck a bit. On the grounds of which. Seem crazy, but I will actually. Oh, of course, I, I don't I have dwarf. That's the thing. So, yeah, well, I'm going to name four and then one. And I'm going to use dwarf pipe to put you the west on the bottom of my deck. Okay, it was one and then four. I forgot which way I had that open. Five resources. I think I lost 21 over what I would have had with the pre router version. It's two threats in the staging area. Three, seven. How much is it going to take to clear this guy? Seven. Okay, I will set the dwarf and and ready him by this guy when we use the silver heart. So I'm pressing for ten. Ten versus five. So five additional progress. Travel here and engage this guy. I remember two progress from the main quest. I'll discard an ally you control. I'm actually going to discard the easy gun miner. I think. Now, archery 2. I'm going to put it here. Then the guild all. Take one damage, now attack 3, 5, 7. 
and the archer is dead. Everything is back under control finally. Okay. Use the mirror. There are all my standing fights. So let's grab one. Uh, random discard. That was not Faramir getting discarded, so I go to Harp. Stargaze. Okay. Go like this. Five. So I'm getting five resources. Two, three, four, five. This time in fight. Bring three iron. And I you know, exhaust Galadriel, draw my third and draw a card, and play Dwarven Tomb to bring back Stand and Fight. Who do I want to Stand and Fight now? Maybe a bit more killing for me would be good. And let's get the card here. And my glasses both the bills. Galdor. Can be both of those. Let's go with Legolas. He's on to get an extra resource. Do you have an Adriano? So I could play Stand and Fight one more time. I want to save the resource for testing will, so it would have to be a lower cost ally. Well, I could just save that for the next round. Yeah, it would end up being quick enough. It could be reasonable, but you can bring it on through. My path on that one is instead, so this is fine. There is an empty staging area, so I think I'm going to be advancing the quest. I am for some Fearion, so I will get to see the top card being counted. I can potentially discard it before I actually do the staging. Quest on 3, 6, 10. I do actually need to take a look at progress. <coughs> so 13, and here we are, shows me in our bus street. So 13, I make 10 progress. And I want the quest. In the current phase, shuffle the discard pile. Into the encounter text on the first play phase. Okay. So I discard until I get an enemy, and it engages me. Okay. Either. Okay, so the next thing we do is attack. And uh, what happens on the other side of this? Nothing. Okay.
Yeah, yeah this is okay. So, now let's find the first one, which would you buy discarding the shadow card? But that's for the immediate attack, because I couldn't remove progress from the main quest. Oh, I actually travelled, of course. And... Yeah, I'm going to discard Farrowman to really go from there and defend with Gorkin Bell. So we have the random defending character count ready, not a problem, he's destroyed. So I would remove progress from my quest, but there is none to remove, and this doesn't matter because uh, at the end of the round of the main quest has, has been in play the entire round, and there are no progress tokens on it. It has not been in play the entire round, so this doesn't matter. Now, and of course when I bring Walker Dog back, he will be back to four hit points. Is the idea here. Now, if you make a quest phase, I'll have to discard until I get another enemy. If I kill this one. So maybe I don't want to kill him. Maybe I just leave him. In which case. Uh, let's use Gilbo's ability. I should have got Gabo instead of Legolas. I mean, I want to test it with Gabo's, so basically, it's, basically the, this actually is fine. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. I suppose it's possible that I might want to kill him in the future, so I will attack with 5, do a 3 damage. And I'll just immediately do 5. And we have resources. But only 10 currently left in my deck, so I'm looking at everything here. Let's grab stand and fight. I think. Yeah. Shuffle. Oh, and use the silver harp. So now I have twelve resources. Which is more than. Uh, no, it's less than I need. Uh, okay. I quite like Galdemir. And I uh, quite like Wolfendale, and I uh, quite like the other one. And maybe do you know, many options here. How many standing fights can I play right now? One from my discard pile and one that's in my hand. So take my pick of two allies, but of course Wolfendale I don't need a standing fight for. Just that I don't actually have quite that many resources. But 
Yeah. Okay. I'm going to pay two to stand and fight his little man. And then um, I'm going to use the Stargazer to please. Alright. I'm going to exhaust the mine there. And then four. There's some dwarf pipe, so the other dwarf pipe goes to the bottom of my deck. Game four is also this. And then I discard the map of the Arnold and play five to stand in front of the Azon. Maybe Boromir actually. Boromir. And I play five to just play Dwarf and Dwarf on my discount on. Yeah. So actually, I can play another standing point. So let's play four to stand in front. Gargoyle Havens. And then I will trigger Arwen's ability, discarding the card and going back to the heart to gain a resource. And this means with Gamble, I draw a card. So, the staging area is empty. I do not need to trigger this forced effect because I am engaged with the enemy. Quest for three, seven. 10, 13, 15. Chances of me winning this round are not high, but if it's possible, I'll go for 18. Twenty. And this is what I see with Hero, it surges, so I'll discard it. Okay, surge, surge. Okay, that's a total of three threats. It's exit number of the engines would be one, so. <coughs> three threat I was questing for 20. Net three, seven. 10, 13, 16, 18, 20. So I make 17 in progress. So I discard this silver heart to boost Aelin, and I make 18 in progress. 1, 2, 3, and 15 here. This is explored. I'm still below the engagement costs of these unbar sentries, so I don't need to engage them. I don't need to travel. Well, at least one player is engaged with the enemy, the players can't defeat this stage. So all I need to do is kill this enemy. The other one will defend, and this, not the other one, but uh, Jubaya will defend and discard the shadow card. And then I can kill him easily. Where else I can draw a card, which I don't need. <coughs> okay. And oh, what was my mining in that final round?
think I'm looking for in which case it would be one otherwise. So okay, but by the end of the quest I think I had it was not quite thirty resources more than I would have had with the poster art version of the miner, but uh, I think it was about 28. So that's a fairly impressive indication of why the clear art version of the Google Miner was ridiculous. Uh, I think I may be slightly disappointed when I go back to the normal version of this deck, though the normal version still does a lot of casket and caches. And <coughs> of course, I, I actually got pretty unlucky with pulling Southern Champion early on. When this is a deck that's not really designed to be able to handle combat early, that was actually one of the things I had in mind was all the engagement costs in this quest are, well, 28 is the lowest. And with the ladder, all this deck's threat never needs to go up, so I could stay below all engagement costs the entire quest, as I did. So I figured that I would be able to take some time to set up before dealing with enemies other than the one that I started with, and I could postpone that with the narrow alleyway. But uh, it, it didn't quite work out like that. And I still kind of stormed through everything. Yeah, with, with this deck could probably beat this quest normally, I think, but not with that sort of luck that uh, the Southern Champion and my, some of my draws were less than ideal, I think. But with the extra resources from pre Arata Z, not a problem. That, that effect is ridiculous. I'm certainly glad that I got to experience it where uh, I never had before. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this little glimpse into what could have happened if we didn't have the Arata. Thank you for watching. Please consider supporting me on Patreon if you enjoyed this, and goodbye.